that is true is because of his love. That his love is the centerpiece. His love is the centerpiece between the flesh and the spirit. His love is the centerpiece between slavery and freedom. And his love is the centerpiece between hopelessness and hope. You look at all the answers that are given in this passage in verses 31 through 35. All the answers are Jesus. Jesus gave himself. Jesus justifies. Jesus died for us. Jesus is at the right hand. Jesus intercedes. That love is at the centerpiece. A love in verse 37. You basically have all these accusations and then literally there's just one word and it's no. No. All of the attempts of the enemy, all of the, the crap in our life that is trying to drag us back over here, one word, no. Have you ever thought about that? What that, the power of that word? No. In all these things, in all these things, in all the things that are happening in your life, in all the, the bad things that will happen, and bad things will happen to all of us, in all those things, no. You are more than conquerors through Him who loved you. You are more than conquerors, not just a conqueror. You are more than conquerors. You are, that's a to be, that is a, an identity word. That we are conquerors. We have hope because he loves us. That we have victory. That nothing will be able to separate us. Nothing. Not one thing. Not anything. Nothing will be able to take us away from his love. Now that guilt and shame, nothing on that board. Just like what Brian said, it's like we have a clean place mat forever. We're going to mess up. We're going to dirty it. But he's like, nothing will draw us back here. We are forever here. This, it's like love has created a wall and we cannot go back. His love will not allow us to be separated. Do we believe that? Do we anchor our lives on that? That should be the anchor of all of us. That his love is the anchor which drives our hope toward the promise. We're going to do communion tonight. And I love communion. I love communion because we get a chance to remember the covenant. Ed kind of said it earlier. Um, Brian said it too, where you have basically two become one. And when you take marriage vows or when you make a covenant, you, I mean, you basically make this commitment. And then it's always great to go back and look at those vows and renew those vows. It's a chance to remember what he did. It's a chance to remember who we are in him. And that is why we do communion. Because we do it to remember because we're just silly people and we tend to forget so tonight is an opportunity to take communion. And basically, when Jesus set up communion, it was the last time he ate. And it was the last supper. And he basically took bread and he broke it and said, Do this in remembrance of me. This is my body, which was broken for you. He's saying, This is my body, which was broken for you. This was the love that I displayed for you. That I laid down my life for you. My body broken then he said, this is the blood that was poured out for you. That his blood was a sacrifice, a cleansing. And he's saying, this is the blood that was shed for you. To erase all that stuff. To cleanse all that stuff. To give you a clean slate. That is what he is saying. So the question is, where are you at tonight? Where is your, what paradigm are you living in?
Maybe the better question is, what paradigm do you want to live in? Let's not think about the past anymore. The past is the past, and we'll deal with the past, but let's just cut that off tonight. Let's cut the umbilical cord. It's not where we've been, but where are we going? What paradigm do you want to live in? You know, what I'm going to ask you guys to do is if you feel like, you know, this is the paradigm you want, the paradigm of the Spirit, the paradigm of life, the paradigm of freedom, the paradigm of hope, the paradigm where nothing can separate us from the love of Christ, then I want you to come up and, and take the body and take his blood and basically say thank you. And say, yes, your love is the centerpiece of my life. That is what I want you to do. But before you do that, I want you to come over here, take a piece of chalk, and I want you to write what it would look like for you to live out this paradigm. Let's stop focusing on the things that we've done and start focusing on the things that we want to be. Let's start fixing our minds on the promise of who we are. And let's write that on this board right here. So I'm going to ask Chris to come up. And he's going to just play a song. I'm going to pray for us first. And I want you to spend some time just thinking about this. What does it look like? be new. This is a big deal. The, the chasm right here between this life and this life is everything. This is life and death. Literally, life and death. It's a, a big deal. I'm not trying to, to overdo it. I'm not trying to do that. But it's a really big deal. And my hope this entire weekend is that I would, I would see every single one of you walk out of this place with freedom. That is my hope. I don't want anybody to be enslaved and shackled. I'm tired of that. We see enough of it in our world. I don't want it in myself. We don't have to live like that. So without further ado, I'm going to ask Chris to come up and pray for us. I'm going to write in the board, and then um, you guys can, can kind of work out what you need to work out. So, you can bow your head. Um, Heavenly Father, I just, God, you are the centerpiece of my life. God, I don't want to be chained to that board because that I don't want to be chained to the things of that board, God. I don't want any of us to be chained to that. There's things that Ed mentioned last night. Love, joy, peace, <coughs> patience, goodness, kindness, faithfulness, self-control, gentleness. All of those things, God, that is what we were created to come into. That is who we were created to be. Jesus, we pray that your body and your blood would cover us. God, that you would put your spirit in us and that we would not quench the spirit. We would not run away from the spirit. We would not reject the spirit, but we would allow the spirit to control us. God, I just get an image of what it would look like for us to be children and and us to be children who are protected and provided for and promised. I think of my two nieces just running around without a care in the world because they know without a shadow of a doubt they're in love. And God, I pray that we would understand what it would look like, what it means to have hope. Hope in this world because we have you and hope in this 
in, in the rest of our lives and in the end of our lives because we know that we are inching closer and closer and closer every second to seeing you face to face. God, I pray this for us. I pray this for myself. God, we thank you. In your name I pray.